Howdy, y'all. So I'm told you want to play with those pesky digital modes using your Flex or your HPSDR. And in order to be able to play that game, we need to install a third-party uh, sound card application. Uh, the most commonly used one is Virtual Audio Cable, or VAC for short and you'll see the VAC buttons here on the bottom of the uh, Power SDR console. So let's dive right in and set up our vo virtual audio cable. The first thing we need to do is obtain our virtual audio cable. and here we go the virtual audio cable this program is shareware it is not free um, it's relatively inexpensive what we need to do is obtain ourselves or if you so wish you can download the trial version but be warned there is a watermark sound in it so do not use it to transmit otherwise you may have some unwanted sounds coming out of your radio so you wish to buy well you may not wish to but if you want to do this you're going to have to so you've bought your virtual audio cable we can skip that little bit and you've been given a download link and you've downloaded your virtual audio cable and it comes as a archive. Depending upon your architecture, you know, you've got a 64 or 32-bit setup. I have a 64-bit operating system. So install. We have to install a sound driver but it does work very well indeed. This is Windows 8 I'm operating here but it works just as well with Windows 7. Virtual audio cable is now installed which was quite painless and uh, I hope that it was a similarly painless experience for you. We need to find it. Virtual audio cable here is the installation. Now here's a critical part. Depending upon the permissions that you've got set up on your computer uh, double clicking on virtual audio cables control panel may or may not result in the desired effect so what we need to do and it's entirely up to you you can either run as administrator manually each time or from my perspective uh, I rather like to have these things sorted out for me so I don't have to think so there we go. So we need to start our virtual audio cable which we need to do from the control panel. This is our opening form. There are a number of parameters which need to be set. Now being that this is SDR there's a very good chance at some point or another we'll be invoking possibly a second receiver. So I recommend we set a total of four cables, one, two for RX2 in and out, two for RX1 in and out. They, they don't take much in the way of resources. The next thing we need to do is to individually set the parameters for each one of these four cables to settings which are appropriate for what we are doing i.e. SDR. Now because we're using VAC for uh, sound card audio programs FLDG, uh, uh, DM780 etc. Some of these programs operate at different sample rates and so ideally we want our virtual audio cables to also be able to uh, to be compatible with those rates. So the common rates that are used tend to be 8000, 11025 and 48. So I suggest that we start with a sample rate of 8000. Now 
here's the interesting one. With Power SDR, Power SDR MRX, it's possible to output the I over Q stream via the virtual audio cable so it can be used by another uh, SDR program. So rather than setting it to a maximum of 48 kilohertz, 48,000 samples per second, I'd suggest that we select 192. That's 192 kilohertz, which means that VAC will be able to cope with a 192 kilohertz sample rate I over Q being output for SDR programs. It will only use the sample rate that's necessary. The settings that I've been using for a long time without any difficulty, range or uh, bits per second, is uh, 8 bits to 32 bits. We don't need to worry about the number of instances, we don't need to worry about the milliseconds. The stream format limit needs to be set to cable range. We do not want a volume control. We want our virtual audio cable to present as a line, line in, line out. We do not want to change the clock ratio. We do not want to change the speaker pin, port CLS, or change the uh, checked enable channel mixing. Indeed, none of the other remaining parameters need to be adjusted. So we hit set, and as you can see, the first one, uh, VAC1, has changed its sample range from 8 kilohertz to 192, 8 to 32 bits. So we now need to go through the other three to duplicate these settings. And that, my friends, is it for setting up a virtual audio cable as far as the control panel for VAC is concerned. I would suggest that you hit the restart button, which will give uh, your virtual audio cables a clean restart with their new settings. And then we can exit. The next thing we need to do is to open up our Power SDR and uh, adjust the VAC settings in that. Now, if Power SDR was running while you installed the virtual audio cables, it will not know that they are there. So it's imperative at this point that you restart Power SDR. And there we go. Right. So we need to look at setup, we need to look at audio, and we need to look at VAC. And we need to set up VAC1 and VAC2. Now, I've already been through this briefly in the uh, video for uh, demonstrating for setting up Power SDR for the first time, but being that we're dealing with VAC, it won't hurt to cover this particular element again, being that it's relevant. So, there will be uh, possibly several options here depending upon what radio you have. With a flex you may well see uh, an ASIO driver there. Now, if at all possible, these three items that you see here, MME, Direct Sound and WDMKS, are in the list, are in the reverse order that we should have them as a preference. In other words, we would prefer, if possible, if our system will support it, we would want to choose WDMKS as our first option. If for any reason that doesn't work, the next choice would be direct sound. 
and if that doesn't work our last choice last resort would be MME however this does tend to increase latency quite considerably and it's an undesirable setting so we'll choose WDMKS and we now have a list of the virtual audio cables that are available and as I did in the power SDR uh, setup video what I would suggest you do to try and keep it clear and clean in your head is to set the input to virtual audio cable 2 and the output to virtual audio cable 1 and the reason that we want to do that is when we come to put the equivalent settings in our sound card audio uh, digital mode programs we can select for them the input will be VAC1 and the output will be VAC2 and as we hams tend to use multiple digital mode programs these days you can select VAC1 for input and VAC2 for output in each of them and uh, it tends to keep it clear in your head it, so it seems uh, counterintuitive in uh, in the uh, power SDR setup to do it, it what would appear to be the reverse way but when it comes to setting up your sound card programs they will be the right way around so I believe it makes it easier for us so VAC2 we want to do the same again WDMKS and in this particular instance we want input as 4 output as 3 so again in other sound card programs input will be the other way around 3 and 4 respectively which is more logical then all that remains to be done is to enable VAC1 hey presto we're off the other thing that we need to pay attention to is this sample rate here in power SDR this is not the sample rate for the radio this is the sample rate for the sound card of VAC we ideally want to set this sample rate appropriately for the, or, uh, the sound card program that you're using um, because what we don't want to do is have our sample rate divided in uh, unequal chunks which will result in uh, alias which we want to avoid it if at all possible it keeps our IMD as low as possible so if your sound card program uses 48 we, we check 48 if your sound card program uses 8000 well you can either choose 8 or you can choose 48 because it will divide cleanly into it same as if your sound card program uses 11025 you could alternatively choose 44100 because again it will divide equally into it if you're uncertain then determine what sample rate your sound card program uses and select that one and use that one that will provide you the the cleanest possible signal other settings notwithstanding I'm going to be demonstrating with uh, WSJTX which has a preferred sample rate of 48k so let's go and hunt for our WSJT let's see now here we go so here is our WSJT please ignore the uh, the third-party applications that attached to it uh, these just happen to be extremely useful helpers for our sound card program we need to go to its configuration wherever that may be and we need to select our audio in and our audio out the initial settings could be set to anything it depends on the application uh, it could be something completely random it could be blank here again we will see uh, a selection of different formats available MME, DirectX, Wazapi and WDMKS and as I say as per the setting up of PowerSDR we need uh, these are also if you like again in reverse order of preference so if possible we want to try it with WDMKS so I'm going to select a virtual audio cable 1 VAC 1 
for the input and VAC2 for the output. OK. And as you can see, instantaneously we have ourselves an input to the program. Let's just bring that one down. And hey presto, as you can see, we've now got ourselves a nicely moving graph uh, demonstrating that we have ourselves an input. And it's as simple as that really. You just need to replicate these VAC1 and VAC2 selections in each of the sound card programs that you plan to use. And of course, uh, adjust the outputs appropriately. Now this is the other important thing that we need to consider. With VAC, we have an RX gain and a TX gain. The RX gain I'll just slide this one over here a little bit more. There we go. The RX gain will adjust the output from Power SDR to the input of your sound card program. So if I reduce it, as you can see, the value on this meter has now disappeared completely. And if I take it too far the other way, of course it will max out, which is undesirable. What you need to set this RX gain value to will be determined by the sound card program that you use. Historically I found with the flex that I used to have to set it at minus 15 so that I could use either WSJT uh, or DM780 from Ham Radio Deluxe. The TX gain is really critical because if you have this set too low, <coughs> excuse me, you'll have no output. If you have it set too high, you will cause chronic distortion and make yourself extremely unpopular. Okay, so here we go. Select the correct one. And as you can see, we have an output from WSJT into our sound card program and with VAC set at minus 1, our ALC is at minus 1 dB. In the digital domain, we must never ever exceed 0 dB, so therefore it is always desirable to try and keep this low. If you keep it well below 0, you'll guarantee your uh, IMD will be the cleanest that it can conceivably be, depending upon the circumstances. Of course, if you're a fan of QRP like I am, if you have your drive level set to 1 for roughly 1 watt, you can reduce your output power further by reducing the VAC gain level on power SDR. Well, I think that pretty much covers uh, the use of uh, VAC for uh, setting up VAC and uh, use with power SDR for. Uh, for digital mode programs. So I hope this has been useful. Uh, 73s and uh, catch you next time on uh, whatever video I make next. Bye bye for now.